Hey everyone, welcome to Liftoff, the channel where we provide SpaceX news and updates and also update you on important developments in the space race. In this episode, we have updates about New Factory and the Chinese mega computer behind all of its space revelations. But before we move on to the updates, please subscribe to our channel. If you enjoy your time with us, please like us and share. Big Ambitions Elon Musk has announced that his company will increase the production rate of its Raptor rocket engine. The Raptor is SpaceX stage combustion engine designed specifically for the company's Starship launch system, which aims to be the largest rocket in the world. SpaceX plans to expand its payload delivery capacity to various orbits and planetary bodies, and Starship is at the center of all these plans. Crucial to its success is the Raptor which sits at the heart of any plans of a Martian settlement through the ability to burn a fuel easily producible from the common environment. Judging statements made by Mr. Musk earlier, it appears as if his company has successfully refined its new rocket engine, designed to mark a collective upgrade over the original. The Raptor, which will power Starship, is the first American-made full-flow stage combustion engine. It uses methane as its fuel, with higher efficiency than the Merlin engine-powered SpaceX Falcon rocket lineup. The Merlin engines used rocket propellant 1, RP-1, or kerosene to produce thrust. In a set of tweets, Musk highlighted that the SpaceX plans to produce at least 800 Raptor engines annually, with a maximum production rate of 1,000. Given that a single Raptor aims to produce 230 metric tons force of thrust, if SpaceX uses all the engines that is produced in a year, then as a whole, the company's rocket will have generated 184 kilotons of thrust in a year. In comparison, during the first half of this year, the Falcon 9 rockets generated 5 kilotons of thrust by launching 20 Falcon 9 flights. The Falcon 9 uses nine Merlin 1D open-cycle gas-generator rocket engines, capable of outputting 95 tons of thrust to generate a total thrust of 855 tons. Mass comments came after he announced that SpaceX would build a new rocket factory in McGregor, Texas, where it also developed its rocket engines. So far, five flights of the system's first or upper stage have taken place in Boca Chica, Texas, with two landing safely on a landing pad to fulfill the central key design criteria of reusability. SpaceX will now conduct an orbital flight test, which will also rely on Starship's large first-stage rocket, which will propel it on all its space missions. This stage aims to use 33 Raptor engines for 7.6 kilotons of thrust, allowing only two Starship launches to generate all the thrust which SpaceX has achieved in 2021 so far. However, whether the test will include a full complement of the engine is uncertain, if not unlikely. Musk has remained muted on the details, having shared concerns in a conference last year about the riskness of losing too many engines during testing. The factory in Texas will focus on what Musk dubbed as a Raptor 2 engines. These engines will power the first stage booster and the Starship second stage, and the later will also be equipped with Raptors optimized for operating in a vacuum of space. Wheat. SpaceX more said its about team Raptors would take additional time week, for pre- Musk also shared his indecision about the engines equipped to the Starship second stage. While the first stage engines have nozzles designed to operate in an atmosphere, those in the second have more leeway for their nozzle width. Larger width allows for more thrust and must deliberate it on whether to use six vacuum optimized engines on a second stage instead of the three plus three atmospheric vacuum combination SpaceX has focused on until now. Two key difference between the vacuum and a sea level engines are their thrust and specific impulse. The sea level engines generate less thrust and reach a lower specific impulse than the vacuum engines due to the Earth's atmosphere, dictating mass flow and fluid dynamics for their operation. 
Specific impulse is the radio of an engine's exhausting gas velocity to the speed of gravitational acceleration, and a higher value is indicative of an efficient design. According to the latest from Musk, the Raptor vacuum engine has a 378 ISP implying that it can outpost thrust significantly faster than gravity accelerates an object falling on Earth. Its ISP is slightly higher than the sea level engines, which is believed to currently stand around 360. The latest production plant will lie at the heart of the SpaceX plans to establish a human settlement on Mars, and the output levels shared by Musk should enable his company to produce roughly 20 starships annually. These rockets will also let SpaceX rapidly build out its Starlink satellite internet constellation and potentially cater toward a lunar crew lander for the National Aeronautics and Space Administration Artemis program. China's megacomputer. Whether it's Chinese rover on Mars, its space station orbiting the Earth, or its moon probe bringing back lunar samples, one little known system is behind them all. The core of the Killin computer operating the system has been guarded as a national secret, and its use in the country's space program has only just been officially confirmed. Its main codes were written by Chinese military researchers, according to developer China Electronics Corporation. But it also includes elements of Unix-like software, FreeBSD, parts from Linux, and a user interface similar to Windows. Speaking to state media on the weekend, members of the Killin development team revealed the role the operating system played in these missions. Coordinating communications between artificial intelligence software, human controllers on the ground, and all the hardware on board the spacecraft. Until about a decade ago, China, like most other countries, relied on Linux and Windows to drive its space programs. According to paper published in domestic journal Space Industry Management last year, from 2008, Chinese space authorities started to replace Western software and hardware in satellites and spacecrafts. The process sped up after Edward Snowden's revelations in 2013 about U.S. hacking activities. Killing was one of the results, along with a Zhangxing or Warring Star, system deployed by the Chinese military space force, according to the paper. Dan Jingquan, a lead scientist with the CEC's Killing Project, said China had no other choice but to develop its operating system. Using other people's system is like building a house on other people's land. It can be large and beautiful, but it also can be destroyed overnight, he said in an interview on state television on Sunday. The transition from Western to homemade software was full of changes, according to some of the software engineers involved. Lu Jun, a software engineer of the Killing team, said space mission requires not only high security, but reliability and performance. That's it for today's episode. Thank you for joining us. Please like us and hit the subscribe button so we can notify you when the next episode is available. Until next time. It's bye for now from all of us at Liftoff.